Okay. Um, uh, Camp Spooky, the stage of some of our dearest summers. Back then, we were young and unafraid. With school far away, everything seemed... I just realized there's a knife. Yeah, okay. Everything seemed possible as the sun embraced us on our way to camp. Summer has that distinct power, doesn't it? You live for the days while the nights inebriate you with possibilities. We had a sushi dinner for her birthday. That sounds amazing. I love sushi. Was it good? There's a hand up here, too. It's like life could take a turn at every corner. And for us, it did. How do I pick a different character, though? Because we... We got... Oh, this is how I... What? Okay, anyway. Who are you really? I don't... Okay. I was gonna say, this is not the right name for Modeus. Of course they're gonna give the one with the heart eyes. I didn't remember which one she was. I just knew she was from Helltaker. Um, because, you know, it said she was. But that small detail, small detail. I'll try to keep myself in check. I can pick... I don't... Spaghetti? Griffin pasta. Of course, if we go out for mom's birthday, it better be good. That's fair. That's a great way to look at it. Totally fine ukulele. Philosopher stone growing kit. I'm not reading that one. Coral comb. Spork. Sock puppet. Penguin mask. Griffin pasta and too many crosswords. Yan. Oh, hey, Medeus. Oh, hey, Medeus. That's what really matters here. We got a waifu. Um, I don't know what I want to... I, I really want the pasta. I don't know what I'm doing with any of this, but... A sprinkled cupcake. Am I missing a reference? Does the spork help with a sprinkled cupcake? Is that how Medea's hair you Oh, okay. A cursed uke. Okay, we will totally go with the totally fine ukulele. Definitely not cursed. Never. Never would be. Apparently that's... Was it creative or smart? I don't know. And then we need one more thing. And there are so many good options. I feel like it's gotta be one of these four, though. Because, like... This is too many crosswords, you know? That's not very cool of us. Also, I think these two both gave us cool points, so... The sock. So you can sock people with it. <laughs> Hilarious. Dechi's just coming in with the puns. All right, well, I'm sure Modeus could really use a sock puppet. One might say that the monster prom had hardened us on the highs and lows of love, but no, in love we're always absolute beginners. And summer camp was no different. No one talked about it, but the idea of a summer love loomed over our heads. Did it though? Close to the last day of camp, there was a meteor shower happening just five weeks away. Everyone knew that if you were into someone, you were going to watch that damn thing together. And so, a silent yet powerful pressure invaded us. It was the monster prom all over again. Except I had a lot more luck with monster prom than I ever had on monster camp. Everything seemed uncertain. Everything but one thing. Whoever we were asking on a meteor shower date, it was probably going to be one of the six coolest people on that bus. Joy Johnson Jojima. 23. A badass witch who wanted to chill a bit after saving the world countless times. Aravi Mishra, 22, a hot headed adventurer possessed by a curse who had turned out to be the most annoying roommate ever. Calculester Hewlett Packard, uh, version 1.1, of course. He's so happy. I think Calculester is adorable. A library computer who had become a sentient sentient robot, ready to experience life to its fullest. Dahlia Aquino, 20, a buff, blue demon and warmonger who had set her sights on conquering summer next. Damien LaVey, 21, drooling little, um, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. And Milo Belladonna, 23, 
a Death Reaper doubling as an internet influencer and who was profoundly in love with life and all its earthly pleasures. So who shall I try to go for? I don't know if we will successfully go for, but who who are we aiming for this time? We're aiming for Mecha Robot Bear. That's absolutely a bear and nobody can tell me otherwise. Unless somebody tells me otherwise. The bus trip was long and all of summer could be shaped by the first step well taken. And so it was clear it came down to breaking the ice and causing a good impression with the right person. Oh no. Oh god. If you could only listen to one genre of music forever, what would it be? Oh. No. Who are we aiming for? And... Why is it not jazz? <laughs> Metal? Very tempting. Jazz all the way? Oh no. Who do we think wants jazz? When it comes to Final Fantasy 16, it's different than the game year for me, but if you want to get into the Final Fantasy, you'll love combat systems, romance, the characters, and the subjects they bring up. Game is like the- Oh, I liked Tales of Arise. I never finished it, though. A uh, little bit of Devil May Cry, Game of Thrones, and Second Son, if you're a newcomer. Uh, but the game is more accessible and more manageable for players to beat. I also like beating things. <laughs> Always metal for me. I don't even know what I would actually answer out of this, because... Um, I'm sorry, Soul, but I listened to, like, literally everything on here except for jazz. Um... But we could... What, what do we think Madeus listens to? Screamo? Um... I don't know. I wish I had a coin here, because I would flip a coin between metal and jazz. It's all good. It's not for everyone. It's not. I think my grandpa really likes jazz, though. Um, not to compare you to my grandfather. He just really likes music. Um, just pick metal. I was trying to find a coin. 8-bit's my second pick. I was kind of considering 8-bit. Mm. I don't have a coin. You can't lose with metal? What if I do lose with metal? Okay, we'll go, we'll go with metal. That just means I'm vintage. There you go. That's a great way to look at it. Oh god. Damien. Die. I kind of thought that he was going to be the Screamo one, so who is Screamo? <laughs> You're into metal too? Never would have guessed. I mean, I guess metal heads come in all shapes and sizes, including wimpy newbie looking sizes like you. Thanks, Damien. That's definitely a compliment, I'm sure. But clearly what you lack in appearances make up for in music taste, so what's your favorite band? We only had five weeks left to woo our crushes and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Are we ready to start? Let's do it by the book. Oh god, where am I gonna go? Alright, so, you all can't see what our smarts is. Let me see if I- I think that I've got some things to flip around my webcam location. Hold up. Hello. I'm in a different spot now. Now you can see how smart we are, which is to say we're not. Um, we're also not very charming. Oh god. We're gonna have some problems. Whoa, teleport. Yes, we teleport. Um, alright. I think... Um... We can go to the manor. It's fine, we're fine. Oh my god, we have boobs. Alright, um... <laughs> That was my response, I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright, at least we're bold. I think you have to be bold to be in our current predicament. While you're exploring the haunted manor, you hear a voice calling your name. It comes from under the bed. Oh, that's boldness for you. It really is. Modeus, please, I didn't consent to this. Two blood red eyes stare at you from the inky darkness under the bed. A voice that sounds older than time whispers. Do you want to gain some boldness? You say yes, because you actually want to do that. Okay, here you go. 
Whatever that thing is, it gives you plus two boldness. What a nice under the bed thing. I forgot how weird this game is. Afterwards, you're searching for haunted artifacts to gift your least favorite cousins when you find Damien scouring the rooms looking for something. Noob. I don't remember him calling us noob before either. Oh, hey noob, did you get an, an anonymous love letter from someone telling you to meet them at the manor from some hot makeouts too? <laughs> no, I didn't think so. No one at this camp but me is hot enough to get... So what? is this game? Oh my god. I don't remember any of this. A sexy makeout invite from a secret admirer. Huh? You're telling me you wrote the letter? Yeah, it's a surprise to me too, Damien. Don't be ridiculous. I know your brand... No, no what? No, no, what? What's this shit? Okay, okay, we're fine. He hands you the letter. It says, meet me for hot kisses in red crayon. Written on the back of the torn out title page of... 101, 101 sexy pranks to play on your horny friends. I'm out. Well, if you're done reading it now, I'm off to win a game of tonsil hockey. Don't wait up for me. Before you can warn Damien about this excruciatingly obvious prank, he heads into the next room only to get a net dropped on him. Nice! What a classic! Prank masters, strike again! Heck yeah, the prank masters know how to put the Z in unexpected net trap, baby. I forgot I love these two. They're like my favorite characters. Also, why is Polly not able to be dated in this game? Riot. The hell are you noobs going on about? Get out of here and so me and my sexy anonymous lover can get way less anonymous. Uh, you understand you're trapped in a net right now, right, Damien? You've been pranked. Seriously? Hey, gross. Don't smooch my prank net. It was a family heirloom. Too late. Damien's really going to town. Apparently, he's dedicated the net. He's decided. The net is his secret lover, since lovers come in all shapes and sizes down in hell. Whoa, Damien, you really have your tongue all twisted up in that net. Are you trying to say you want to play tug of war? Give me the other end, I'll tug your- I don't want to play tug of war, Scott. I'm stuck. Great, now he really is trapped. You'd better figure out a way to free Damien's tongue from the net, or it'll never get trapped in your mouth. You know, I'm gonna leave it there. Thanks, though. Thanks for the offer. Uh, remove the net with your own tongue, or bring in an expert surgeon to do a tongue transplant, freeing Damien in the process. What? <laughs> Alright, well. We are not smart. We know that we are not smart. As much as this goes against me, we are bold. <laughs> we are. <laughs> uh, it goes against what I personally would go with. This does too, technically. I don't think that I would think about a tongue transplant, so... Not so charming. Ah, oh, that was supposed to be charming? That's like the only thing we've got worse than smarts. You've watched a lot of YouTube videos on how to tie a cherry stem into a knot with your tongue, so how different can untying a knot in a net with your tongue be? <laughs> Great logic. You smash your tongue against Damien's tongue. It's slimy and wet. Who would think? Hey, what the fuck do you think you're doing? Why are you trying to horn in on my action with the net? Yeah, what's your deal? Do you even have consent from the net to be macking on it like that? Sicko. Uh, you make me miss school. Boldness does not fix dumb. At least I had a, a totally legitimate love note from the net. Mm. Yeah, you're gross. It's like Coach always taught me. We never let anyone pat you, lick you, or give you flea medication unless you say it's okay. Is that why Scott always has fleas? Ugh, problem for another day. You try to free yourself from the net, but uh-oh. It looks like you're stuck now, too. This seemed like a good idea at first, but this is actually the least sexy scenario that could possibly involve both your and Damien's tongues. I, I actually disagree with that, too. It's dry, itchy, and now you have rope burn. Definitely the second worst makeout you've ever had. You do both eventually get free, but it turns out having rope burn on your tongue looks suspiciously like herpes and no one really believes the truth. 
You lose two boldness and one charm. Not the boldness I got from the monster under the bed. Oh. But I tried. Should have brought my sledgehammer. Okay. Okay, no, we can recover from this still. We are gonna. I don't know I can go to the lake. Uh, we're gonna go into the woods where nobody can hear us crying. Oh, and I guess we're gonna lurk on some birds. While you're hiking through the woods, you find a little clearing with a beautiful pond. There's a very handsome man staring deeply into the pond. He's talking to his reflection like it's another person. A person he really wants to have lewd activities with. You swipe his wallet while he's not looking and find out his name is Narcissus. He is not an organ donor. And he is one punch away from getting a free smart water at 7-Eleven. Well, he's definitely not going to be using that anytime soon. You head to the gas station and gain plus two smarts from your smart water. Not sponsored. You return to your tent for some alone time after all the drama, but you should have known drama would follow you to your tent. You see Damien punching everything. Why did we go with metal? Oh, mosquitoes, why don't you suck the blood out of my fists? Oh no. The mosquitoes, which you now realize are what Damien is actually trying to punch, seem more than happy to oblige. They swarm all over Damien's furious hands. And all over everything else, including your attractive face, which immediately gets punched by Damien. Whoa, is someone there? My punch sense is tingling. Oh, it's you! I didn't see you there because I was blinded by my rage at these stupid mosquitoes. Seriously, I hate these little things. They think they can just come over here and steal my blood. I honestly, I feel him on this one because I have a bunch of mosquito bites from being outside yesterday. This is why I don't go outside. This is why you shouldn't go outside. And I didn't even know they had fists, but it looks like one of them just punched you in the face. So not only are they stealing my blood, they're stealing my whole thing. I think he's got lower smarts than us. When did we gain? Oh, we gained. Oh my god. We gained smarts literally during this interaction thing, and I was just like, when did we get smarter? Wow, amazing. The worst part is I can't even do anything about them. Camp director Miss Weaving confiscated my mosquito killing machine gun because it exceeded the max number of machine guns allowed at camp. All I have left is this stupid mosquito spray, but it turns out it's mosquito sun spray, which just made them immune to skin cancer. Or maybe it wasn't the spray, maybe the mosquitoes are in league with the sun. I should have killed that solar son of a bitch when I had the chance. He was allowed to fight the sun in the last game, wasn't he? I'm vaguely remembering something about that. Maybe I can kill them by shooting blood out of my eyes, or shooting harpoons out of my harpoon gun, or shooting harpoons out of my eyes. I really thought he was going to skip Harpoon Gun and go straight to the eyes, honestly. Oh dear, it seems like Damien's discovered an experimental new level of murderous rage. You better find a way to rid him of these mosquitoes because you're the only one who should be allowed to bite that spicy red skin. Steal Damien's blood back from the mosquitoes in the most ambitious heist in Camp Spook history. Mosquitoes can't stand the smell of lavender, citronella, or lemongrass. Replace all of Damien's blood with essential oils. You know, I don't... I don't know where any of this is going, and it seems like if I try to use logic, the logic fails me. Hard to choose. It is. I'm thinking of turning Damien into an essential oil holder, though. Because had AFK. What did I miss? Uh, we ended up on Damien's path, and um, we've already failed one, so now we're trying to figure out how to keep Damien away from mosquitoes. Um, also, our charm is abysmal, and we only started getting a little smart recently. So I think that we're going to um, swap out Damien's blood with lavender, and we're going to really hope that I've got whatever that uh do is to do that you know oh wow look at that we're so smart 
first time for that. Essential oils, no blood? That's an awesome idea. I mean, it's not like I need blood, right? If I did, it wouldn't be called blood, it'd be called essential blood. These oils are way more necessary. With Damien's blessing, you prepare a proprietary mixture of essential oils, including lavender oil, a citronella oil, and Damien's personal favorite, crude oil. You assumed you'd have a hard time actually replacing his blood, but it turns out it's really easy to find mommy blogs selling essential oil dialysis machines. Crude oil, yes. Yes, it's working. The mosquitoes are retreating and I can feel my power increasing. Wait, is that power I feel? Or disorientation? It might be disorientation. Oh shit. Is blood the thing they said was important to keep in your circulatory system? I should have done less arson in biology class. Whatever. Dying's awesome. I've always wanted to punch God. Hours later, in the extremely overtaxed spooky hospital, you're standing by Damien's bedside when he Lily, wakes up. Masters of survival. Oh, I'm alive. Hell yeah. And there are no mosquitoes anywhere in sight. Looks like blood is an essential after all. Plot twist. It totally is. The doctors put Damien's blood back while he was passed out, and you made them promise not to tell him because it would undermine his self-image. As for the mosquitoes, let's just say you've always wanted an excuse to secretly spray bug repellent on Damien every night while he was sleeping. Nice, you gain plus two charm and plus one smarts. Oh look, our charm is finally starting to go up again. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. Oh, man. No, 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 we're... No, 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 no. Damien, Damien, we're gonna work with the whole Damien thing, okay? We're working with it. The ground is quaking, birds are fleeing from their nests, a frantic newscaster on the radio is screaming that the end is nigh. Is it the apocalypse? No, not quite. Damien and Dahlia are just having another argument. I don't remember, like, anything about Dahlia except that she is big and blue. Eight, nine, ten. <laughs> I licked the campfire ten times, and you said I couldn't. But as I've proven time and time again, I can do anything. No, the best, the bet was that you can't lick the campfire ten times without burning your tongue, and you couldn't. That obviously means I'm the superior demon and the hotter. I'm I'm censoring myself a lot here for a variety of reasons. Just, you know. She big, blue, and more manly than Damien. It's true. It really is. I feel like she should get along with Scott really well. Is that confirmed anywhere? Are they friends? Because they should be. Hey, you can't prove that my tongue hasn't always been this blackened and bleeding. This bed wasn't fair. The hotter fudge, yes, exactly. Face it, doll. Anything you can do, I can do better. Give me ten minutes alone with this campfire and I guarantee you I'll tongue it to perfection. Okay, first of all, ew. Second, you've gotta choose the last bet. It's my turn to make you look like a little bitch. Hmm. Ooh, I bet you can't stab your hand 16 times without screaming. Hmm. We did that one last night. I still have the knife sticking out of my palm, stupid. All right, I thought that was just a weird new piercing. <laughs> Who says it isn't? This is chaos. Wait, I've got it. I bet you can't fit 12 whole giant marshmallows in your mouth. No way you're getting out of this one, you little red weenie. What is this? What is that thing? Yeah. Why? Yes, I can. You have no idea what I can fit in my mouth. You have no idea. Well, if these two are set on this bet, why not make it a little more interesting with something you could get them to wager on this marshmallow challenge? If Damien wins, he gets 100 of Dahlia's soldiers, and later he can challenge Dahlia to fit all of them in her mouth. If Dahlia wins, she gets to write down a law of her own for the 8th circle of hell. Logically, we... If... If we're going with Damien, we would... Damien wins, right? I would think. I would assume. I'm concerned. I think we're gonna go with Damien. 
Just because it feels like it's the most logical. I just realized her pockets are sticking out of her shorts. Hell, 300 years in the future. Late, one winter's night. An innkeeper finds herself up late, serving the mysterious weary travelers who stumbled in a few hours ago. Of the finest cuisine and the spiciest wine. Can she become romanceable? I know she doesn't have eyes, but like, I can look past that. Here you go, sir, another mug of fresh coffee. But I must ask, why are you still awake? It's nearly midnight. Through hell and back. I need a drink. Well, he's only got one eye. I true, but I must be awake at dawn if I want to continue my journey. It would be much easier to stay up through the night, though I do grow exhausted. You can look past it, but she can't. I was trying to think of a joke for that. You win. You win. Uh, Is that town. so? Well, there's an old story my grandfather told me that would keep me awake for weeks. Let's see if it works for you. It was a dark summer's night when two ancient demons, one a sumptuous prince, the other a monstrous war lady, were engaged in a spirited trade. The war lady offered the prince 100 of her most loyal so soldiers, men and women who had spent their lives bathed in blood and honor, as a show of good faith for a bet. However, when the evil prince acquired these heroic soldiers, he instead convinced the war lady to eat them all in one enormous sticky gulp. Not gonna lie, she's cuter than Damien. She is! She totally has charm. And 99% of the dateable ladies, right? I think... Why has there not been a petition to date her yet? Oh. How ghastly. Were there any survivors? None, when the scene was found later. All that remained were their uniforms covered in blood and grime and a note which said, Eat up, you blue fuckface. What a terrifying letter. Surely such a horrible story can't be true. Yes, perhaps it is just an old wives' tale, but I still sometimes wake up from nightmares hearing the war lady's beastly chewing and the prince's cackle on the breeze. I date her, same though. Meanwhile, back in the present. 10, 11, 12. Holy crap, he totally did it. I don't, I don't know how to words this one. So I'm just gonna let you all read it and figure out what it says yourself. I don't know what it does say. It's a crisis. Dude, spit the marshmallows out. We can't understand anything you're saying. Mm. Ugh. Okay, to recap. I told you, uh, I did it. That's what I said. Aww. All right, yes, it all makes sense. Listen up, dudes. Now hand over those soldiers, Dahlia. Time for you to get a taste of military food. Huh, and you still think Damien's smoking hot, even with globs of gooey, chewed-up marshmallow on his lips. Young love, so reckless, so stupid. So stupid. Oh, God. Okay, okay. Where can we get charm? I feel like... Is it from the haunted house? Do we get charm at haunted house land? I think that's... Th we're gonna go with it. That's where we're gonna go. Because I need more charm, and I need more fun, and no, that's coolness. Where is charm live? Charm's here. I learned, just now, that if I hover over this, it puts an icon on top of all locations to tell me what it is. Speaking of charm, it's been charming, but I need to get some Z's. Talk to you later. Talk to you later, soul. Have a good sleep. Um... We're, we're going to this place now. Spin the bottle for gym class? Okay, Medeus looks adorable here right now. You're huddled behind a bullet bunker in the throes of a tail tag battle royale against camp rival camp. You're sure that this is the end? Spin the bottle. Yes. That guy's got one horn. I can't tell if this is a cat or not. For gym class. Why wasn't this in normal gym class, huh? You've lived a good life, you think. Next to you is a camp rival camp member, shivering and crying and out of ammo. Why guns are part of tail tag is beyond your comprehension. 
Is this where we die, they sob? Why couldn't Camp Spooky and Camp Rival Camp just make love and not war? You reach for them as if to bring them into a tender kiss, and as soon as they're in your grasp, you take their tail. That gives Camp Spooky the win! Everyone saw your sexy ruse, which also gives you plus two charm. We're doing great now. Super great. You and Damien are lounging together, having a surprisingly chill time reading comic mm -hmm. books. This is gonna sound crazy, but can you pass me that one that doesn't have someone putting his fist through someone else on the cover? Loser. Oh god, there's three of them. Wait, what's this now? You're gonna read actual words that might describe something other than punching? <laughs> what? No. Who said that? I was just asking for the one without someone punching so I could eat it, obviously. Uh-huh, right. What did I say, Dahlia? I told you he's getting soft. <gasps> but not so soft that you won't still come to stand strangling, sand strangling and ocean kicking with us tonight, right? My biceps are ready to choke that sand right out. And I got special boots made with spikes on the bottom and the sides and the top, so I can really show those waves who's boss. Uh, well, that does sound great, but... Mm. But? Speaking of the ocean, I was actually gonna watch this documentary on dolphins tonight. I'm making popcorn and baking dolphin-shaped cookies if you wanna join. Uh. Oh, wow. You've changed, Damien. It's no wonder the wildfire hasn't appeared to you yet. Wh what do you mean? I know you've been on the hunt for the elusive wildfire, and I know it's thus far evaded you. Eluded, not evaded. And I also know why. You are unworthy. The wildfire only appears to those who are badass enough to be worthy of its unbridled glory and untamed majesty. No it's true, one. I was just in the woods one day playing with matches and suddenly out of nowhere the wildfire just appeared. It was one of the most magical moments of my life. There was nothing like seeing a wildfire out in its natural habitat. <laughs> Too bad you'll never see it. Face it, Damien. You're just not metal anymore. <laughs> not metal? Not metal? I'll show you them who's not metal. Or I'll show them who is metal. It's me. I'm still metal. Yeah, that's why we're on the same romance path, Damien. Yes, but rock on, indeed. Now, to prove it by becoming worthy of the wildfire. But how? Perform the sickest skateboard trick, escaping from a tank of water while chained and on a skateboard. It's metal, yes, uh-huh. Write a poem, but a poem that's very metal. This is a problem because I don't like poetry. But our smarts and our creativity is higher than our fun, and I think that the skateboard trick is gonna be fun. Why does everything go against everything that I know? Everything. I don't really. I don't. I don't skateboard either, in all fairness. But I like skateboards more than I like poetry, and that's what really matters here, you know? Uh, but I think that we might have to go with poems. If we fail this. I'm never gonna trust poetry again, ever. I don't even have a haiku right now to express my upsetness when this fails, but I think it's poetry. I hope. That's crazy enough it's so work. creative. Great, great. Of course, nothing's more beautiful and poetic than the raging of the wildfire, so obviously a poem would attract it. But there are so many different kinds of poems. Sonics, haikus, elegies. <laughs> What's the most metal variation of the most metal art form? Ooh, an acrostic spelling the word metal. It can't get any more metal than that, literally. Unless I pack it chock full of metal things. Damien contemplates his literary masterpiece for about 10, 12 seconds before re reciting to you his finished work. I'm gonna hate this, huh? M is for metal. Also for meat. E is for everything spicy I eat. T is for the terror I inflict on the masses. A is what I kick, which is for everyone's asses. 
L is for the last letter in metal, and also for longest, which is how I describe my... Were you about to end a poem with a dick joke? How not metal? Uh, no. Sure, Red Rocket. Anyway, it's not like poetry can't be badass, it's just yours that sucks. Aravi, melt this demon's face off. Aravi and Hex, don't try to own us. Spitting critical rhymes with a plus 10 bonus. Oh god. I regret the, the poetry either way. This win does not feel like a win to me. Everything hurts. It's painful. I... I want to cringe so bad at all of this. My name is Dahlia and I've got nine pecs. Call me uh, Newtons, cause I invented cringe, 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 Hell yeah, now that's poetry, baby. I don't know. It, I felt like it lacked the deep thematic resonance and emotional maturity of my poem, but whatever. We're like masters of survival. Thanks for having my back. We'll lure the wildfire out yet. Maybe next time we do a tag team poem like they did, but with themes. Oh yeah, Demian said that he wants to team up with you. You'd love to see it, and you gain plus two boldness and plus one fun on the spot. Great. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's do it by the book. Modeus, adorable. Okay, um... Cringe. Yeah, cringe. I think we need more fun. I'm getting worried now, though, because, like, I'm looking at the, uh, scores up there, and it was easier when they were, like, so many were all six. <laughs> six, six, six. six. Um, because they were all an even amount so it's like I only had to worry about really one stat oh my god she's adorable the statement below is less adorable oh my god while looking around the lake for a private place to take a pee you find a treasure map buried in the sand it leads to an X in the center of the lake you gather a crew of trusted friends, don your eye patch, and sail out there to find the booty. When you arrive, you find a tiny island with a single palm tree. You dig up a box that says open in case of a very boring day. You open the box and find plus two fun. Pirate noise. You're resorting your collection of Pokemon cards, thinking wistfully of the Terry the Taxman you once traded for an Arctic colon co colonialist. Ernest Shackleton, when you're interrupted. There you are, I've been looking everywhere for you. Me? Oh, are you sure you're not looking for Kitty? Those words warm your heart more than any fire ever could. Even more the wildfire for which Damien is presumably searching desperately once more. I think we're heading toward a special ending. But we need to not mess it up. I'm searching desperately for the wildfire once more. And there it is. Since you were such a big help last time, I thought you might want to try again. I mean, you weren't such a big help to, as to actually bring the wildfire. <laughs> but I did appreciate your support and enthusiasm. And mostly, if I do find the wildfire, I'm gonna need a witness to prove it. I realized our approach last time was all wrong. Yes, we pulled off something radical and metal, as only I could, and with you watching, I guess. But, is, fi is fire most known for being radical and metal? <laughs> yes, of course it is. I think fire is most known for being fire and then hot. Um, but it's also most known for being dangerous and reckless, obeying no laws and fearing nothing. And red, is fire red or orange? Or blue. The wildfire will not appear simply to those who are radical in metal or it totally would have already come to me i need to do something truly unmistakably dangerous and reckless to lure that sneaky wildfire out any thoughts 
You're so tempted to tell Damien that the appearance of wildfire is based on weather and foliage, not worthiness. And Aravi was just screwing with him. But doing that would be against your own interest since it would cut short this valuable bonding time. So you make up some reckless, dangerous, stupid bullshit because apparently putting your crush in danger is worth it for you as long as you can do shenanigans with him. You should really do some introspection about this later. Um, don't know how to pronounce that. Um, by your priorities and ethics, but for now, you pitched Damien the best idea you've got. Enroll in an expensive university, declare a useless major that has no job security. So reckless. Oh, thanks, Dechi. I'm glad that you've just taught me how to pronounce a word. Three words? An amount of word vis a vis. Did that work for you? Like that? Just like that? Yeah, kinda. Kinda sounds about kinda. Alright. Uh, someone truly reckless would travel at 150 miles per hour in a Ferrari being driven by a cat. Cats don't give a fuck. Do I have a cat cam here? Kitty. Do you agree with this statement? She doesn't care. So I think that it's proven. Alright, so, um... This is obviously smart. Is this fun or boldness? Because that's the only two things that'll go faster. Faster? Yeah, yeah. Better. If it's charm, I'm screwed. But... Yeah. We're, we're gonna try, I guess, cats. I can't... Cats. So bold! Great! Yes, I'm into it. I'm into it. And I can always scare up a Ferrari at a moment's notice because that's how badass I am. But where are we gonna get a cat? Kitty? Oh, hello, friend Damien. Hello, friend Modeus. Oh, God. Did the cat shirt summon... Yeah, sure, this why not? This cat is a good cat. This cat is a good cat. Yeah, it is. I found this cat in the woods, and I have been searching for the rightful owner. Well, you found him. That's me, the rightful owner of this cat. <gasps> is this true, friend Damien? You do not seem like the type to voluntarily take care of a small, helpless creature with love and care. Well, according to some people, I've completely changed and am no longer a hardcore badass, so I need this cat to lean into that and complete my transformation into a responsible, non-reckless person. <sighs> I am so glad to hear that. I will return the cat to you. I feel like we have much more in common now that I know you care for this cat the way I care for my plants. Yes, of course, and I'm not going to do anything reckless or dangerous with this cat. <laughs> smash cut too. Wait, did Damien just say smash cut? Oh, that was a smash cut somehow. You're now speeding down a highway at 200 miles per hour in a Ferrari. Driven by a cat. Driven is in quotes because the cat has no thumbs and its little paws don't reach the gas pedal, so it's a cat in the driver's seat and Damien's foot gunning the Ferrari. The Ferrari crashes spectacularly, of course. You escape unscathed because you're the protagonist of your own life. Damien does a dive roll out of the Ferrari, clutching the cat to his chest. That's Damien style, baby. I did it. I saved the cat, proving that although I'm a badass with a stone-cold exterior, I have a heart of gold. Whoa, that was actually pretty sick. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there's no way the wildfire can doubt the worthiness of that cat. It was the one driving the Ferrari. I'm sure the wildfire will appear to it soon. Ugh, I didn't even think of that. Don't worry, we'll get it next time and find that wildfire once and for all. Just watch us. Us? We? Seems like Damien's starting to think of you as a team. Sick. Plus two fun and plus one charm is all yours. At least we had a cat. Can, do, can, can the cat stay? Can I sit with the cat for dinner? No. No, I can't. Mothman. No. No. But Mothman. Wow. 
wow, we have so much fun now. Look at how fun we are. Yeah, I know how to be fun. You were hoping to make sexy small talk with Joy and or Damien, but they seem to be too busy having unsexy angry talk with each other. Seriously? There are a million reasons why you can't be the main coven villain next season, but I'll just start with the most obvious. Villains don't ask us to fight them. They just do villainous things, and then we try to stop them, which they don't want us to do. You're not a big bad. Just by asking us to fight you, you're already inherently proving that you would be a terrible coven villain. But what if I'm using reverse psychology and I'm so villainous that I know the second I let my true villainy shine, you and the coven will rush to fight me? So, if I get you to reject me as a villain now, when I finally do unleash my villainy, you'll have to- You'll have already agreed not to fight me, and I'll defeat the coven with no resistance. Hmm, it's an interesting point, but I'm not buying it. Don't get me wrong, you're irritating, but you're not evil evil. <laughs> you clearly wouldn't know real evil if it burned down your tent, which is clearly going to be my next step now. Okay, the real evil here is campmates fighting with each other when they could be flirting with you. Complete opposite of me, IRL. Which one? Being a villain? Are you a villain? Are you not a villain? Time to step in. Damien's a prince. No. Oh. Not. Having plus 10 fun? Oh. Well, is it because you have plus 20 fun? Are you just doubling it? Is that what's happening here? Are you rubbing in how fun you are? Damien is a prince, and everyone knows monarchies are bad. Toppling LaVey's autocracy is great next season arc material. Maybe? I'm on to you. I understand, you're just... You're being rude about how little fun I have in comparison. All good villains are either orphans or have terrible parents, but you, Damien, have two loving dads. Do you really want to give up your dads just to be a villain? I think he possibly would. We're gonna go with Damien's a prince, because that sounds like it's in his, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, good point. Hoarding that kind of wealth and power is inherently immoral. You should do something about that. Why not make me your villain and bring democracy to the eighth circle of hell? Uh. First of all, I don't know. That sounds kind of presumptuous on my part. Second of all, wow, you're really quick to sell your own kingdom down the river, huh? Hmm. Why not? I never even wanted to be a prince, much less a king. All I ever wanted to be was a hairstylist and also a coven villain now. And you don't care about selling your dads down the river sticks by taking their kingdom away? What a noob. I mean, not to be rude, but I want you to try to fight me for the Eighth Circle. It's not like I think you'd ever actually succeed. What? <laughs> yeah, isn't Dimitri like your number one enemy and he shows up at our school all the time, Joy? And now our summer camp. That's kind of the exact opposite of defeated, isn't it? I, I... How dare you? Dimitri is a special circumstance. Nah, just a perfect template. It's like you always almost defeat your villains, but then they always find some way to come back and keep the show going. You're pretty useless. Uh, that's it, you villain. You're officially my enemy. Fucking metal. That's the spirit. <laughs> I'm gonna destroy you and then take over the 8th circle of hell? Just don't tell Dahlia. This is gonna be my thing now instead of hers. Awesome, next season's main recurring with a great arc. Here I come. Let's start with guest star and go from there. Joy and Damien spend the rest of the evening plotting and counterplotting. Being enemies has made them better friends than ever and Damien shoots you a very grateful and sexy wink. Yeah, yeah, sure, that's winning. Oh, wait, what's this? I don't remember this. I need to move, hold on. Okay. <laughs> What'll it be then? I'll take a gamble, I'll use my skills, I'll make my choices. 
A choice about moving, that's all I know. Um, I'll make my choices. Ah, oh, welcome, welcome. You new here? Don't fret. Let me explain how this works. I'm pretty sure this is the voice that I gave the cat last time, or something very similar. All these drinks are free, just grab whichever one you want. Is that easy? If you want to unlock more free drinks, talk to the guy who runs the metal shop. How does the metal shop work, you ask? Wheel? It's similar to Pat's voice? No, this is more like Pat's voice. Which I guess is actually kind of similar, but the cat's is funner. This one might be easier, though. Similar. But this one's fun. Well, that's above my pay grade. I'm just a cat in a wizard hat. Enjoy the drinks. One by one, fair, fair, I'll yes. All join my harem. What about a harem? Ooh, rainbows. Is that got a unicorn on it? Okay, I'm terrified. Um. What one should I go for? I'm thinking either rainbow or this heart thing. Oh, that's what she said? Oh, thanks. Will you join Modeus's harem? We don't want the wine bottle with the toilet on it, because I don't think we want toilet juice. Just saying. Which Helltaker is your waifu? Modeus is basic as far as Helltaker goes. There was also merch for Cerberus at um, the convention I went to last, but it was like um, a little plastic standee thing, so I didn't get it. Cerberus good doge. It's true, she is good doge. All three of her. All right, um, rainbow or nine with heart powder. Powder? Cloud. Her. This also has a heart in it. It seems very promising. Um, I might go with Rainbow, just because that unicorn's eyes are kind of freaking me out, and I don't know why, but that makes me think that if I drink it, it'll go away. It's as solid logic as I'm ever going to get, you know? So let's go with a um, Rainbow drink. No refunds. Imagination shots. Imagination shots. Drinking this will expand your mind. It's pure creativity. This small unicorn is just decorative, but you can eat it if you feel like. Please give me an option. Can I eat it? And this is the part where I leave before you puke all over me. Ciao. Thanks. Um. Let's engage in proper camp activities. Yeah, so we're gonna say that I ate the unicorn. I don't care if it's decorative. It could be made of plastic, but I feel like Modeus could down it. It's okay. We do need more charm, though. So we're gonna go to the gym again. I'm kind of trying to stay away from the manor regardless. Because the manor, she was shirtless when I went there last. And um, we're, I'm, I'm not, I don't want that on Twitch too much. Because you know, Twitch is gonna be a little... Eh. So... And I don't want to have to, like, blur things out. That's effort. I don't like editing. That day at the Camp Dome, you play Never Have I Ever Extreme. Every time someone mentions something you've done, you have to cut a finger off. It does seem a little extreme. But besides the finger part, this is finally a great time to brag about all the cool illegal things you've done. You're the first out, and while they're suing, you're suing. Sewing your digits back on, you get to regale your friends with stories of how you robbed a bank while wearing your grandfather's skull as a hat. You're so cool. Also, they sew you plus two charm to your left hand by mistake. I, I don't know how they do that, but thanks. You link up with Damien afterwards. He told you Coach wanted him to dig a latrine and he could use a hand. I don't want to help with that at all. I don't care if he's my crush. There you are. Thanks for showing up, but I think I figured it out. I didn't know what a latrine was, but it sounds French, so I made an educated guess and buried landmines everywhere. Sure, it's better than me helping. You look at him perplexed. The French didn't invent landmines, you tell him. What? They didn't? What's the point of the French, then? Get off my property. Who are you? 
Hey, stop burying those landmines on the property. You're dangerously close to exceeding the state of California's recommended landmine maximum, and I don't need that for paperwork. Are we in California? Me, dude. Your land? What are you talking about? I've carved my name to every building here and most of the campers. Sorry, kid. Not actually sorry, I'm evil, it's just an expression. But Camp Spooky's mine now, here's the deed. What? No, you can't buy Camp Spooky. This is the home of some of my most treasured memories. Also, all of my landmines. All this will be a shopping mall. Your memories and explosives will have to find another home, Sonny. This is shopping mall country now. Yeah! That, that, that blows. Shopping malls are useless. Why build one here? On the contrary, shopping malls still have one very important use, making summer campers like you absolutely miserable. Let's go, intern. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to spill some oil in the Pacific Ocean and blame it on sea otters. Not the sea otters. I'll be back with the bulldozers this afternoon. Toodles. We can't let that colossal wiener bulldoze our beloved camp. I was planning to bulldoze our beloved camp. There's only one way to fix this that I will accept. Crimes. I love crimes. Great, great. Come on, Modeus. Help me think of an act of vandalism so heinous it'll scare that dweeb away for good. Bring in the one thing guaranteed to destroy the value of any property. Shitty neighbors. Or sow salt in the soil so no shopping malls will ever grow here again. Okay, um... I don't know what these skills are supposed to associate with. Which is a problem. I feel like the salt in the soil could either be creativity or smarts, which are complete opposite sides of the spectrum for my skills. And the shitty neighbors is probably literally anything else. I don't know, it could be smarts too. So what do I do? This is a problem. Also, there are a lot of dead guys behind Damien in this scene. Um. Why can- why is it that both of them have the potential to be smart? This is terrible. Bring in the one thing guaranteed to destroy the value. The answer is, I don't know. What would you pick, Dutchie? Because I don't know either. Remember, our smarts is our lowest stat. So we want to try to... Probably shitty neighbors? Are we sure? I don't... It, it might be creativity. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with neighbors. Why not? Why not? Oh, look! It was apparently fun! What? You're damn right. Shitty neighbors can turn the best property into a carnival. Mm. Like my neighbor, Randall? He smells like burning hair and has a fishing hat that I covet. God, he makes me sick. But where will we find some appropriately shitty neighbors? It's not like Randall's moving anytime soon. Damn him. Convince Randall to move anyway. What we need are some skilled, bad neighbor impersonators. Caper experts, you know? How many of you skipped thus far? I don't know, but at this point we need to use the bleep counter for how many swear words I'm skipping throughout this whole thing. I've said, like, one of them this whole time. Because, you know, I'm trying to go with the whole the PG-13 rating, where you're only allowed one F-bomb per movie, you know? I'm trying really hard. Anyone who knows me, and knows how I originally ran this stream, knows that I drop a lot of swear words in my spare time, so censoring them out is a little difficult, but I'm working on it, because, you know, I need to have a better vocabulary than that in real life anyway, and it starts to bleed into my normal and yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing. Um, or, what's another way to say that? Oh yeah, we need some prank masters! With a Z. Neither of those needed me to say them because they said it for me, but that's okay because I love Polly. She needs to be in this game. Part of the, like, Polly's really cute. She is! And she is in the newest game, and that's like, part of why I want the newest game, but 
this game I feel so iffy on that I can't decide if I want to get the other monster game. What's it? Monster Road Trip? But Polly is in it. And I love Polly. Polly and Miranda were my waifus from Monster Prom. And I think they're both in Road Trip. I was gonna say es escapade specialists, but that's even better. Wasn't Vera your waifu? Vera didn't like me very much. I don't remember what voice I gave her before either. But I mean, she was also my waifu. But Miranda's the one that I got a special ending on. So I have a special spot for Miranda. We're here to be your fake bad neighbors, bro. Polly already made a list of everything we need. One white picket fence, one roll of garden hose, and one bucket of fake mustaches. The voice you'd give to an unpleasant person. Like the smug my voice. Do I have a smug my voice? What is my smug voice? Why so many fake mustaches? There's only two of you and you don't really need a disguise. <sighs> yeah, it sounds deeper. The joke's okay. And the pace is slower. Oh. I don't know. I did my research, Damien. If you took all the shitty neighbors in the world and put them in a pile, do you know how many mustaches you'd have in that pile? 1.6 billion. All right, you're the professionals. I'll get you some mustaches. I have a bunch of severed heads I've been meaning to shave anyway. Maybe if you listen to brief streams, you'll find it somewhere over the rainbow, I don't know. I think it's been a long time since I've used um, my unpleasant person voice. One gruesome disguise montage later. All right, I'm back. Hope you wore your getting evicted pants because I, who are you guys? Hey, We're your new neighbors, bro. A polyamorous thruple of horny mustachioed men. Polly definitely looks like a horny mustachioed man. Uh, my booty is filled with skills. Interesting voice line for that one, but yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, we love having threesomes, growing body hair, and vandalizing shopping malls in bizarre and disturbing ways. Welcome to the neighborhood. This is not a prank, and I am normal. <sighs> what? They said nobody lived near this camp because of too much collateral damage. You're telling me I have to find a way to evict you guys, too? That'll take weeks. I'll be back. You win this time, horny mustachioed thruple. But you haven't heard the last of Mr. Pappas, evil CEO. I will return. Like Hopefully no time soon. Survival. Hell yeah, we did it, especially me. I think I'm really getting the hang of this prank thing, don't ah. you? Most definitely, bro. Like when you said this is not a prank, even though it totally was a prank? Where do you even come up with this stuff? Mm -hmm. I guess I was just inspired by the mischief in Modeus's heart. Oh, thanks. Thanks for backing me up. Hot stuff. <laughs> Damien's not the only thing you'd like to back up. The other thing is his ass. My, yeah, mm -hmm. This game might be punishment for me. I don't know what I did wrong in life, but man, it feels like pain. You gain plus two fun and plus one creativity. There's part of me that really misses playing these types of games and I love it so much. And then there's also part of me that is like, not even slowly dying inside, it is like rapidly disintegrating every breath I take. So yeah, it's a whole thing. It's it's definitely a roller coaster. We want to be kind of smarter, I think, because we're a little dumb. But also I think we might need to be more bold, which means we have to get shirtless somewhere. Do we need boldness for Damien? Do we need charm for, I don't know what we need anymore. Anyway, um, 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 we're gonna boldness, I guess. It's fine. We're fine. We're shirtless again. Right, right. That day in the haunted manor, you accidentally stumbled upon a cult meeting in the hallway. The cultists are wearing terrifying black robes, standing over a bloodied body and chanting. You try to flee, but one of them shoves a flyer in your hand. 
The ink burns your eyes to read, but you manage to find the words new recruits get healthcare benefits with same day sign up. What? Sold? You gain a bunch of new cultist buddies, and your new insurance covers spontaneous plus two boldness growths. Cool. Great. Later, you're snooping around looking for spooky things when you run into a six foot tall, six foot wall of impenetrable muscle. Hey, Modeus, what are you screaming for? This place isn't that scary. What, like a few severed heads and visions of my grandpa screaming in horrendous pain are gonna freak me out? Where I'm from, you can buy that stuff at Ikea. Okay, this is, ugh, what the hell is that? Me in 20 years? No, I can't lose my buff terrifying beauty. My swollenness is my best feature. <laughs> I don't know whether I should be offended or smug that my appearance is your worst fear. Oh, hiya! Oh, hi, 12. How's it going? Ugh, what are you doing here, daddy's boy? Someone shut off the AC in your private condo? How's the game's time? It's pretty games. It's pretty time. It... Full of swearing. There's so much swearing in this game. How's it going for you, 12? <laughs> no, I came here for the same reason I go anywhere. I wanted to set shit on fire. But apparently, this building is a flame retardant. I held a blowtorch next to the wooden staircase and nothing happened. It was the scariest shit I've seen. It's raining hard here. I'm camping, so no more outside by the fire. Oh god. Do you have a camper or a tent? Because I feel like those are very different issues. Like, a camper is way more cozy if you have to deal with a rainstorm, you know? <laughs> camper, luckily? Oh, thank god. Because a rainstorm in a tent just sounds miserable. No, you tramp. You tramping around here without makeup is the scariest shit you've ever seen. Ha. <laughs> burn. Don't say burn. That word has no power here. Well, they argue you go to find the haunted bathroom to take a spooky pee when you hear the sound of a trap being deployed along with Damien and Dahlia screaming in unison. You turn back and see them trapped in a fishnet that appears to have dropped from the ceiling. Standing underneath it are a group of teenagers and a Great Dane. Oh no. Great job, everybody, says the blonde, leader-looking teen. I knew the clueless crew would catch these crooks no problem. <laughs> like, what do you mean no problem, asks the skinny stoner teen. Scrooby Doo and I were scared stiff. And like, we're almost out of dog treats. Definitely not Scooby Snacks. I'm not reading what Scooby says. Wait, the dog talks? And it's beckoning for the other teens to pass the blunt? What is this game? Why? I don't... I knew it was a bad game. I remember it being a bad game, but I don't remember this level. You know? Ugh, let us down the... Right now, before I stab your eyeballs out and shab them... Shab up. Uh, where are my words? Gone, gone, just gone. This is a punishment game for you, I know. This... You know, I should have my, like, a swear jar. The bleeps should go into a swear jar, and after it reaches a certain number, I should be forced to play Monster Camp. That's the punishment. Let us down right now before I stab your eyeballs out and shove them up your asses like anal beads. Great, Hot great. stuff, wink, wink. <laughs> yeah, hot stuff, wink, wink. Uh-huh. Yeah. GPs cries the red-headed teen. Mr. and Mrs. Guggenheimer are really mad that we try that we ruined their plot to drive down the price of this property and resell it for cheap. Wait, you think we're real estate agents? Fuck off. Gross, you think we're married? Uh. Look, whoever you think you've got, it's not us. We're not real estate agents, we're demons. We're way more upfront about the whole eternity of damnable torture than most landlords and don't bother hiding any of the details in the contract. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's not entirely true. My dads do make a lot of their money by selling off land in the eighth circle of hell. Gotta cool down. I mean, it's 60 nice degrees outside right now, so I'd say it's cooling down already. It was like 80 earlier. What? I can't believe you! 
LaVey is always abusing your power and speculating with your crappy land. It's too late, Guggenheimers, says the nerdy teen. As soon as I find my glasses, we'll tear those stupid masks off your face and send you to prison. Okay, but seriously, can somebody help me find them? I can't see anything. It seems like these weirdo teens want to rip Damien and Dahlia's faces off, but you like those faces and want to smooch them. You need to save them using clueless crew logic. Transform your skull into the head of a real estate agent so you can rip off your own face and present yourself as the true villain. Point out that it's problematic that these kids invaded people's homes, trap them against their will, and rip off their faces without their consent. Who's the real criminal? Are either of these probably smart? Because we can't go with smarts. That's like the main rule that we've got going here is that smarts is a failure. Blue person has car cat Bakugo vibes. I definitely see the car cat vibes, I'm not gonna lie. I I feel like the red one's closer to Baku, Bakugo though, but it might be because explosions and fire. Um I feel like maybe there's a chance the top one might be creativity. So I think that's what I'm gonna go with. I don't, I'm worried about this. Oh yeah, didn't know all that. Oh yeah, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, mm -hmm. Fire, yeah. So bold, that was not creativity, but close enough. You quickly perform a powerful and very specific spell that you learned for this exact purpose, and it works. Hurts like a bitch, but it still works. You run out into the hall where Damien and Dahlia are dangling and rip off your face. You don't feel any better, but it's worth the pain. Zoinks, said the stoner teen. It's the real Guggenheimer. Scooby, please. What is... Why is the dog the most vulgar thing in this scenario? You introduce yourself as Alexander Guggenheimer III, an unscrupulous real estate agent whose plan was to drive down the manor's value and buy it at a quarter of its price. Your performance is convincing, especially since you didn't know this property was owned or for sale earlier. Is the persona of this sleazy real estate agent possessing you? Apparently yes, you end up selling the teens on an even spookier haunted or mansion on the other side of camp that you didn't even know about. They're especially drawn in by the promise of an enormous kitchen wrap around background wrap around background walls and hallways full of doors that break the laws of physics. You cut down Damien and Dahlia after they leave. You're in charge now. That was awesome. The way you just ripped your face off like that with no regard for your personal safety. I can't wait to practice it later. Yeah, and I love what you've done with your skull. Like did you get Botox or something? It really brings out the salesman in your eyes. Dahlia and Damien, stitch your face back on. It's almost as painful as when you first ripped it off, but hey, they're impressed and safe, and you gained plus two charm and plus one boldness. Which is all that really matters in life, isn't it? Do you like chocolate pancakes? Chocolate pancakes. Oh look, Damien's next to Calculaster this time. I love Calculaster, except for when it came to his aunt calling me that one time. Damien and Calculaster are discussing something. Chocolate pancakes, yes. You head over there on the off chance that it's about how desperately one of them wants to have relations with you. No survivalist. Don't take it so personally, Cal. I'm not saying you're stupid. I'm saying you're super dumb. When it comes to surviving in the wild, and I can help. I realize you are attempting to help. I am not offended by your baseless and untrue observations. I am merely reminding you that I am a machine and therefore not alive, and therefore do not need survival skills. Huh? Sure, you say that now, but what about when you get lost in the woods and have to eat your own arm to stop yourself from eating your own genitalia? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even if I did need to eat, which I don't, my arm is not made of caloric, squishy meat like yours. It would provide little nutri nutritional value to anyone. Whoa, that's crazy. Really? That's crazy. I guess that means you'd have to eat one of your legs, which is way less convenient, but it'd still get the job done. I fear you are not grasping the real problem here. 
Wait, I just remembered. My arms are made of squishy meat and flesh, and I have two of them. You only just now remembered that you have two arms? I'm a pro camper. Why don't I just give you one of my arms so you can eat it if you need to? Then we'll both be safe from starvation. Damien one, nature screw you. Why was he screaming? Friend Damien, I appreciate the insane gesture, but I assure you this is not at all necessary and actually quite traumatizing. Screaming, yes, exactly. Happy be right. Too late, already got my pocket buzzsaw. Now, do you prefer red meat or really red meat? While it's clear Damien's trying to be a good friend, you'd probably be a really bad friend if you didn't stop him from cutting his arm off. He'd be losing so much tattoo space. Doesn't he have like a tattoo of like an avocado or something and if you mention it, it scares him and he never wants to date you or see you again? I don't know if it's an avocado. The best way to do that would be to propose a different survival technique Cal could utilize, but what to suggest? When you're in the wild, always utilize power saving mode. Offer to let Calculester eat your arm instead. This is definitely Calculester's option. Avocado, yes exactly. Avocado is from Mexico. Um, offer to let Calculester eat your arm instead. I think that's where we've got to go, so that's where we're gonna go. I realize Damien's finger's doing something real weird there, but that's, that's fine. He doesn't need it. He's gonna cut it off to give it to Calculester anyway. Red. Oh, Modeus, you'd be willing to let Cal eat your own arm? That's so metal. Yes, it is metal and totally illogical. Please do not cut off your arms. I do not even have a mouth to eat your limbs with. And my favorite thing about Calculester is the faces he makes. 8-bit was probably a Calculester's... When, at the beginning we had to pick a song, or um, what, not song, but a genre that determined what path we were on. And one option was 8-bit, and it took me until right now, an hour in, to realize that 8-bit would have taken us on Calculester's path. That's a good point. Okay, Modeus, what if you cut your arm off and I cut my mouth off and we give them both to Cal? Oh dear, oh gosh, oh no. Oh dear, oh dear. Every time I make an observation, my friends want to cut off more of their body parts. Is this a curse? Is this hell? In the chaos of Cal having an existential crisis and Damien waving a knife at his mouth, you take the initiative to hack off your arm with Damien's buzzsaw. You quickly faint from the blood loss. When you come to, you find Damien sweetly doctoring your wounds, which is almost enough to distract you from the blinding pain. Oh, hey there, sleepyhead. Listen, it was really badass of you to cut off your arm for Cal. Mad respect. Sadly, Cal rejected your thoughtful gift. He ran away to find a hospital or something. As if you can rely on hospitals in the cold, unforgiving landscape of nature. <laughs> But don't worry, I reattached your arm so you can save it for someone more grateful. I might have sewn it on backwards though, my bad. Oh, you can't stay mad at that adorable sinister smirk. Besides, having a backwards arm is a small price to pay for Damien to like you. Yeah. That's a small price to pay. All right, all right. What's our lowest thing? Smarts, cause we're dumb. All right, how do we get D less dumb. Where is less dumb? The woods is apparently less- that is so not less dumb. But that's fine. That's fine. That day in the woods you find a mysterious portal to an unknown dimension. Whoa. You're not so stupid that you jump into it yourself this time. So you decide to tie a chipmunk to a string and throw it in there. You pull the chipmunk back, expecting it to be dead, or at least warped by the interdimensional travel, but it turns out whatever is on the other side of that portal taught the chipmunk calculus and some very... cogent? Cogent? and uh, whatever. Arguments about gender identity. You and the chipmunk have a long, insightful conversation, and he helps you with your summer school homework. You gain less new smarts. Great. I apparently go to summer school. Less great. Afterwards, you manage to convince Damien that back massages keep away mosquitoes, and you're really getting after it when... Hey, uh, has that weird chuckling lamp always been over there? What weird lamp? Oh. 
Wow. Okay. There's something weird about this lamp. I just can't put my finger on what. Well, in the words of the great Mahatma Gandhi, when in doubt, set it on fire. That's you? I can see it. I can see the resemblance. 110%. You're pretty sure that's not what Gandhi said, and you tell Damien so. Really? Huh. I tried to read a biography of Gandhi once, but... Gandhi? Gandhi? Once. But I couldn't understand it, so I set it on fire. I thought that was the lesson the book was trying to teach me. <laughs> that was about five minutes ago. The book's still on fire, actually. In fact, it's what I was planning to use to burn this lamp. Watch. <laughs> Gandhi. Look, he set the book on fire. You can't expect him to pronounce it right, okay? I'm amazed Damien can read. No need, Damien. The only person who's been burned here is you by my impeccable disguise. What? Oh no, it is me. Is it? Is it truly? It is. It's absolutely. 12 is now this. I don't know what his name was. Oh, apparently Counselor Flodge, who is now going to be Counselor 12. You were the lamp this whole time? I couldn't understand a single thing that voice line said. Was that... words? Guilty. Pretty cool, huh? Only if you think lying is cool. Which I do, but only when I do it, not when people do it to me. I wasn't trying to lie to you, Damien. I was trying to teach you a lesson about the wonders of camouflage. Get real. Camouflage is for stupid babies who are too lame to solve their problems with violence. Sneak level 100. That one was words. Oh, so it's violence you're interested in, huh? I'll have you know that in the head heady days of my youth, I once disguised myself as a baguette in order to stab the French prime minister. But France doesn't have a prime minister. They have a president. Only because I stabbed the Prime Minister. Just my work. I didn't know camouflage could be used for stabbing. This changes everything. But I still don't think it's for me. It's pretty hard to blend in when you have such blemishless crimson red skin. <laughs> don't worry about that, son. I can change my skin to any color I want. And I'm a master of disguise, so clearly skin color doesn't matter here. Sneak level 100. I'm dying. Yes. It's good, though. It's great. Uh, Camp Hansler 12 is so far my favorite character. Aside from Polly. Who isn't romanceful. All we need to do is find the perfect way for you to blend into your surroundings. Ooh, ooh, you got an idea. No, we don't. Get a high-powered job in the fashion industry and make red the in color for the season and next season and every season ever. Hide Damien in a giant bowl of delicious wine punch. This is another one that could really go either way. I'm, I'm leaning toward the fashion industry because fashion is creative and creative is my highest skill, but it could be smart. Nothing feels smart in this game. Ugh. So creative, look at that. The, a classic technique. It's like I say, punch. I should have done it, but this one worked. It worked. In my best-selling disguise handbook, do it next time. If you can't change how you look completely, alter your surroundings to match how you look. You're a real hero for volunteering for this dangerous job. Here, I'll help disguise you as a fashion icon. Counselor 12 disguises you by putting you a beret on your head and dressing you in a trash bag with armholes. I once dressed one of my coworkers in a trash bag with armholes. Because it was raining out and she didn't want to get her clothes wet. So we literally cut holes in a trash bag and put it on top of her. It's fine. Thankfully, all fashion is an elaborate lie, so when you apply for CEO of Vogue, everyone assumes you're too fashionable to even comprehend, and you are hired immediately. Once hired, you discover that Vogue is the most powerful institution in the modern world, controlling not only fashion, but the economy, all world governments, and even people's thoughts. The controlled thoughts is come to my VTuber debut on Wednesday the 12th. Just do it. That's the only thoughts. Okay, thanks. Bye. Uh, 
You declare next issue's theme to be red and herald it as the most iconic color of all time. Then you make the next six months' issues red themed just to be safe. And just to be extra safe, you use Vogue's last resor vast resources to implant microscopic mind control devices in all the world's water, making red everyone's favorite color. And also destroying their abilities to see other ones. Hooray for fashion. Everyone starts wearing red all the time and painting everything red and stabbing each other because they like the way red blood flows out of their veins. Green is cancelled. Everyone agrees that it's actually just another shade of red. You make plans for red to absorb two to five more colors in the next fiscal year. Nice work. Wow. Hey, Modeas. Thanks for mind controlling everyone in the entire world in order to make it easier for me to hide. Now that nobody can tell the difference between red and green, I can blend into the forest and nobody has any idea I'm there. I've stepped like 18 people. This sounds like a Night Vale arc. You're so right. It absolutely does. Also, I've been voted Monster Magazine Sexiest Monster Alive for forever. You're the best. Hell yeah. You promise to celebrate with Damien in a romantic manner just as soon as you can tell him apart from the background. Meanwhile, you gain plus two smarts and plus one charm. Great. Great. Let's do it by the book. All right. We got a lot of 12s for our uh, score stuff. More smarts? Okay, we'll do more smarts. I need a drink first, though, because making Damien's voice makes my throat angry. This is when I should have had Green come onto the stream so that he could voice all the male characters for me. But never to do multiplayer again because it breaks the game. I need to even the chart to all 12s. I'm worried, though. Green? Green Star? You know, who used to play this game with me, except only once, because... You mean the newest shade of red, look. He still goes by green, but green's been cancelled, so it might damage his reputation a little bit. But... It's the red star, exactly. That day, while you're hiking through the woods, an angry gnome steps into your path. Halt, giant beast, he cries. If it is passage you seek, you must first answer my riddles three. Riddle number one, how is a raven like a writing desk? Hmm, that's a tough call. But you give your answer. You punt the gnome into the sky and continue on your merry way. Even though I actually had an answer for it, but sure, why not? Apparently, that was the correct response, because nobody else tries to mess with you. You gain plus two smarts, which isn't 12, but it's 13, and that's my lucky number, so why not? No, I know. Okay, here's a riddle for you. What do you get when a sheltered prince, a buff blue murderess, and a goth bookworm who's sick of their shit and a horny person goes on a hike together? My lucky number is 11. Well, great! You're very bold then today, huh? The answer is lost. You get lost. I need a break. For the last time, we are not lost. I know how to get back to camp from here. If you guys would just listen to me, I'll lead you back to- lost. Joy, shut up and face reality. We're definitely lost. We've been walking in circles for hours. We've passed that tree like 20 times. Ah. We're in a forest. All of the trees look identical. No, no way. I've seen movies. This is the part where we're, we all start arguing and dissolve into madness until the forest witch comes and kills us. Maybe it's the gnome that I punted into the sky. Joy outfit, 10 out of 10, right? I definitely like Joy's outfits, like, I don't like Joy as a character, though, which is the problem. A witch is definitely going to kill you if you don't calm the hell down. No, for once, I think we should hear Damien out. Any survival technique could be crucial to surviving long marches in the wilderness. Long marches? We've been out here for 30 minutes tops. Okay, first things first. I need some water before I start having dehydration hallucinations. Good thinking. Oh, it looks like the canteen's empty. What? 
Damien, chill out. How do you expect me to chill out when we're lost in a forest without any water or faucets? Or chase lounges to faint dramatically on? I don't want to die surrounded by noobs like you. And a hydrate from 12. Thank you for the hydration reminder. You are not gonna die. We're super close to camp, and even closer to at least two freshwater streams. You will be, thanks. No, I'll never make it. The solution's obvious. We need to drink our own pee. Damien, do you have, do you have some, something about that that you, you don't need to share with the class? No, actually, we really don't. We only have two options here, Joy. If we want to make it out of here alive, we either have to drink our own pee or cut off our hands. Ah, no uh, the lesser of two evils survival tactic. I know it well. I'm very attached to my fists of blue fury, so I will stoop to drink my own urine if my life depends on it. Ugh. Guys, if I have to watch you drink your own pee, I'm definitely gonna barf. Hey, that's good. Try to barf into a bag or something. We can eat it later when we start starving to death. No, don't give up, Joy. Maybe if we make the pee more palatable, time will be able to function this whole conversation without cringing every line. It'll keep your morale up while we slowly die from exposure. <laughs> Good idea, Dahlia. Maybe we could make a pee energy drink, or even a beer. No, we need something that will still hydrate us. What about a tea? They're only one letter off anyway. Now's probably not the time to correct Dahlia's spelling. Ooh, I have a better idea. What about a boba tea? I love boba tea. Did anyone bring any powdered tapioca we can make into the boba pearls? I really wish I liked boba tea. I always want to drink boba, but then I get it, and then I get sad. I'm a pro. Hey, I have some. Valerie sold it to me a while ago and assured me it'd be useful. Boba gross. It is, and that's the saddest part. Because I really want to like it, and a lot of times the drink itself tastes good, but the pearls, no matter what pearls I've tried, not, not a good time. I don't think that I like to chew my drinks. I'll eat all the boba. Okay, you can have the boba bubbles, and I will have the drink part of it. Um, and assured me it'd be useful if I was dumb enough to get into drinking my own pee for stupid reasons. Get pearless tea? Where? How? It truly baffles me that you two will put so much effort into something so completely unnecessary. Okay, time to forage for some flavor-enhancing ingredients. Damien, you enjoy get to that while I boil the pea. It should only take... Oh wait, Dahlia. Are you holding a water bottle? Dahlia's hands are empty to me. Uh, yeah, duh. What else am I gonna boil the pea with? My own sweat? That's just disgusting. Enough of this. Why can't we just drink your water then? You need to learn from the pros. Well, it's a little late for that now, isn't it, Joy? Dahlia's already boiled her pee with it. No turning back now. Plug your nose and get ready to chug. Uh-oh. You probably only have a few seconds to stop Dumb and Dumber from drinking their own urine before Joy blows chunks. Better think of something fast. Spoil the tea and convince Damien and Dahlia not to drink it. How can you spoil it? Well, by peeing on it. Perform one of the most difficult and obscure survival skills of all time. Peeing Dr. Pepper. Okay, well, I feel like... Dr. Peeper, yeah. It does become that, Dutchie, you would be correct. I feel like with it saying it's the most difficult and obscure survival skill, that that might be boldness. In which boldness is our lowest thing. What? What? 12. <laughs> what? What? So I'm thinking, I'm thinking that the, the other option 
might also be boldness because you're urinating on something in front of everyone. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. There, I, I'm, I'm remembering a lot of reasons why I didn't play this game more than a few times. This is the best punishment game. It really is. Maybe I should just do like a really high level channel point redeem where um, I have to stream Monster Camp if someone redeems a certain amount of points. Somebody tell me the amount of points to set for it and I'll do it. Okay, we're gonna spoil the tea by peeing on the pee tea. Ooh, that'd be fun, right? I would cry the whole time, except not really. Uh, okay. Ah, creative? Was the other option smarts? Ugh. Okay. In a moment of genius, you quickly pee on Damien and Dahlia's pee there. That should spoil it and make the pee totally undrinkable. Nice, now it's even more drinkable. And there's even more pee. Glorious work, warrior. I knew you would come around to my battle strategy. I thank you for your sacrifice to our noble cause. Oh god, no. These demons are even more depraved than you thought. You're making it worse. You try with all your might to stop peeing, but you haven't been practicing your kegels, and it's basically impossible to stop midstream. Alas, you pee for about 22 more seconds, and everyone is slightly weirded out by how much you had inside of you. And time is traumatized the whole time. Alright, time to save my life in this nightmare nature. Damien takes a victory sip of the extra urination. And immediately spits it out. Ugh, this tastes awful. No, wait, I mean, it doesn't taste like... It, it tastes... It tastes like pee. Dahlia takes a massive sip of the pee and does the biggest spit take you've ever seen. Hopefully not onto you. This sounds terrible. There is so much wrong with all of that's happening here. Horrible. It does taste like pee. How could this have happened? I'd like to cast a spell to erase my own memory of this. I just want to say for the record that I am not surprised at all. And you guys are making it so much worse with these spit takes. Oh, they are the dumbest thing. Yeah, yeah, Damien and Dahlia, or Damien and Scott and Dahlia, they're like the dumbest characters you can possibly have ever. To be fair, their concoction was probably destined to taste like pee because it's made from it. Oh, yeah, you added some more to it, so you're not really sure what they expected here. They really thick. That's what we're calling it, sure. Come on, Damien, it's obvious that they made our pee taste like pee. What a betraying jerk. Wanna go grab some beers back at camp? I'm going back to camp. Metal, let's ditch these losers. I'm actually super thirsty now that I think about it, so a beer would be metal. Dolly and Damien walk back to camp, arm in arm, seemingly oblivious to one, the fact they just drank pee, and two, their own wild stupidity. I was typing a thigh joke and you beat me to it. A thigh joke? Well, at least Joy will appreciate your attempt to spoil their pee drinking you're panic. Not a big bad, but you're still very bad Are at this. you seriously looking at me for a pat on the head? You just helped them drink pee, you gave them more to drink. Ugh, whatever, I'm leaving. I've been meaning to practice my teleportation magic anyway. Thick thighs, ah. Those are some thick thighs, yeah. Yeah. Joy throws some powder on the ground and in an incredible magical feat, she disappears. And reappears about six feet away. You wave hello at Joy. Yeah. Ugh, shut up, I'm still working on my range. Joy stomps away with non-teleportation walking magic and you are left alone in the woods with no friends and no more pee left in your bladder. You lose some of your dignity along with minus two boldness and minus one creativity. That was rough. That was... Oh god, and it's those two again. Couldn't we have Calculester? Please? <sighs> okay. Like any night around a camp spooky campfire, the air is filled with the smell of smoke and the sound of bickering. For the last time, Damien, you simply don't have what it takes. What? How can you say that? How can I not have what it takes to be your next bad guy? I'm the baddest dude I know. You're not a big bad. 
You're Be that as it may, you are not the baddest dude that I know. I've fought many impressive villains in my time who've done far more villainous things than you ever have. I can get there. I can be more villainous. My whole thing is trying to save the world. Why would I ever encourage you to be more villainous? I'm a pro. Well, if you don't want to encourage me to get more villainous, then I think you need to admit that I'm already a villain. Ugh. Ugh, I have real bad guys to fight, Damien. Some of them are probably plotting unspeakable crimes right this second. Give it a rest. Of course, the most unspeakable crime of all would be missing out on this golden opportunity to impress one of your campmates. You leap into action to avert that potential crisis. There's no villain more dangerous than Damien is to his own well-being. Be the hero, Joy, and stop him from causing himself so much harm. Or it doesn't matter how villainous Damien is or isn't because he can't, doesn't fit the most important description for a coven villain. Wanting to have intimacy with Joy. Well, we're still trying to go for Damien. Mm, this sounds like one of Modeus' semantic loopholes designed to curry favor with her crush. But I'm willing to hear you out. So Damien, what have you been doing to make you a danger to yourself? Oh boy, let me tell you. I arm wrestled a crocodile for a piece of gum, but it was my arm versus the crocodile's mouth. I used a beehive as a punching bag and wore a bear trap as a bracelet, and for breakfast I had hot sauce and nothing but hot sauce, and also the hot sauce bottle. And I went sledding down a mountain at a 90 degree angle, straight down, and the sled was my own butt sitting on nothing but the ice, and then I did laundry without fabric softener. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Are these really all things you've done in your lifetime? <laughs> lifetime? Joy, these are all things I've done in the past 48 hours. <laughs> okay, I admit I may be able to work with that. I think it's pretty clear the first precaution we need to take. Epic laser sword showdown at the edge of the cliff? No. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is wrap you in bubble wrap. Red. Yes, our first real villain fight. Joy wraps Damien tightly in bubble wrap as he celebrates his defeat, and this is good for you for three reasons. One, Damien is thrilled, so mission accomplished. Two, Damien is now at least 26.4% safer from his own shenanigans. Three, Damien actually looks really hot wrapped in bubble wrap. Is this your thing now? Apparently, this is your thing now. You secretly stash away some bubble wrap just in case you get to... <clears throat> battle Damien yourself one day. Great, bring out your flasks. I had the option to make my own choice before. Do I want to use my skills? I'll use my skills. Against your better judgment, you decide to visit Juan that weekend. Just in time, I prepared a bunch of drinks. I have no idea what they do. They could make you immortal or turn your blood into mayonnaise. This is fake. You know, wizard in training, drink at your own risk. Just in time, yes. But if you've made up your mind, get ready. Um? What am I doing? Help! Oh my god, what is this shit? Uh, I am having a crisis. It's fine. I don't know what I was doing. I just pushed up a lot of times. That's why it's pixelated. It's uh, intimacy on the beach. Ah, intimacy on the beach. I brought this drink to the next level, as you can see. Give it a try. I assure you, it'll be a fun ride. Just like this seems. Oh, almost feel something. Hope you can stomach that. Happy trails. Great. I don't understand what that was. Okay, okay. Luckily, we only have a couple days left in the game, so let's, uh fix our boldness. Let's fix our boldness. Because I broke it. Where does boldness live? I guess it's at the mansion where we're shirtless. Yeah, that's cool. That's great. That's amazing. 
That day you explore the haunted manor's basement only to find out it has a sub-basement. The sub-basement's full of haunted chairs and a staircase to a sub-sub-basement. The sub-sub-basement is a haunted wine cellar. The sub-sub-sub-basement is a haunted nightclub for ghosts who don't like wine. They serve haunted spirits. Ha! The sub-basement to the tenth power is a subway. You eat a footlog Reuben and continue your travels. You eventually check a walkthrough and find out the haunted manor can spawn an infinite amount of sub-basements. You only make it as far as the 89th level, which is a Dom Sub Leather Room. I was waiting for that joke. The whole time. You gain plus two boldness from the horrors you witness there. You faintly hear what sounds like haunting classical music and murmured whispering, par for the chorus at the HM, but you hear a familiar anime scream. We're cute, right? There's a reason I picked Modeus. You're all idiots. We can't open our concert with a forgotten tomb song. They're not cool at all. That's why we've been for they've been forgotten. It looks like your friends are in a room surrounded by Victorian ghosts having a party, and your friends look pretty freaked. Are they scared of ghosts? What? No, not at all. We have literal classmates who are ghosts, Modeus. She's your wife. You may remember that Damien, Dahlia, and I are all in a screamo band called Ventagram. It's pretty fun. Shrieking semi-coherently into a microphone is actually a good way for me to relieve stress. The problem is these Victorian ghosts hired us for their annual temporary return from purgatory party here in the ma haunted manor, and we can't decide what to open with. Huh? This is going to make or break the entire concert. The opening number is pretty much the only song anyone will be sober enough to listen to. You can't help but inquire about the logic of spirits from the 1800s hiring a screamo band for their concert. Well, I don't think that they always liked screamo, but being condemned to an eternity of purgatorial torture tends to affect your aesthetic taste. What a noob. Yeah, have some compassion. Hmm. Anyway, back to business. I agree with Damien, no forgotten tomb cover. The best screamo cover is obviously Dangerous Woman by Ariana Grande. Dahlia, just because you scream the lyrics to Ariana Grande songs doesn't make them scream at all. Fucking metal. Agreed, let's do Your Makeup is Terrible by Alaska D D Thunder Intimacy. Wow, I need some other words for that. At least six of the words in that are song are like my entire vocabulary. And neither of you know what you're talking about. I'm the lead singer. I get to decide what songs we do. Ugh, screw this conversation. I'm setting the amp on fire. Damien, no, it's a rental. You'd better solve this argument. Thunder intimacy. Look, I ran out of words. You better solve this argument before the ghosts get sick of your shit and start doing Victorian ghost things like throwing vases and huffing opium. What song should your friends open the concert with? The best song to open anything is an anime opening. The best anime opening is, without a doubt, A Cruel Angel's Thesis from Evangelion. Or Victorian ghosts are combat because they love Victoria Adams, aka Posh Spice. You should do a screamo cover of Wannabe. I think Spice Girls could be fun. Could be fun. Fun is our highest trait right now. It could be fun. I'm having a crisis. Okay, okay, okay. We're... I want it to be Spice Girls. I'm gonna be honest. So, we're gonna go with that in hopes that it's fun. It's, crazy it's smart. Work. Great, we're smart. Close enough. I don't know how Spice Girls are smart, but yeah, it works. That's genius. Why didn't we think of that? Yes, the power and catchiness of the Spice Girls does transcend genre and historical re relevance. It was the perfect opener to our Victorian Screamo concert. I'm not super convinced, but I admit that I don't have any better ideas. And at least this gives us an opportunity to perform that Screamo wannabe cover we wrote while we were drunk. More like super drunk. They're smart because they managed to get rich with average musical talent. Fair enough. It's because they had great stage names, okay? I have Barbie dolls from them. 
Your friends perform a screamo wannabe. It's surprisingly catchy, and the ghosts seem to really love it. Wow, they're really going crazy for early 2000s pop, huh? Hmm. Well, when you think about it, it makes perfect sense. The lyrics of Wannabe are actually pretty relevant to the Victorian time period and the purgatorial experience. Hmm, I think I get it, yeah. Like when they say, V doesn't come for free, she's a real lady, it's talking about none other than Queen Victoria. Good thinking, Dahlia. This is later followed by the part that goes, if you want my future, forget my past. Are we just... <sighs> I don't want to break down more. Okay. I got it. That line's about moving past the horrible shit these ghosts did while they were alive, dooming them to endless purgatory until they can perfect their corrupted spirits. If you fall in love with one of them, you must learn to love them despite their terrible sins. So cursed, yet so romantic. Oh, yeah. And then the whole if you wanna get with me, better make it fast is a reference to how these ghosts come to roam the manor only for one day every year. It's like a fleeting love, or more like a fleeting night of lewd, lewd stuff, whichever's your jam. Who knew that Miss Demon Slayer's boring poetry study class would actually end up being useful for something? You think your friends might actually be onto something? If only because you overhear some ghosts commenting on how they are super high on Victorian ghost opium and tripping out by hearing those fleshy ghosts scream nonsense. But you'll never tell. Instead, you continue your thousands pop throwbacks well into the night. Avril Lavigne's Complicated is surprisingly catchy when backed by a muddied power guitar. It's a great concert and you gain plus two creativity and plus one boldness. Wow, our boldness is 12 now. Nothing's 11 anymore, though. I'm sorry, Dachi. Okay, okay. Let's engage in proper camp activities. Um, let's raise our charm. I think charm was, um, sports. So, yeah, let's raise our charm so that maybe we can char charm Damien into charmliness. Man. This run is infinite? Yeah, that's why it took so long that we disconnected when we played with green, remember? Remember? Another day at Do Camp Dome, another day trying to survive a deadly battle royale. We're almost done with it, though. We're literally on, like, one of the last events, so... You managed to murder ten people in twenty minutes. What a feat. The audience roars. This will certainly give you a lot of boldness. But wait. The Camp Dome shouldn't make you gain boldness, but charm. Even if that doesn't make sense, you want charm. You think quickly and make a fancy hat out of the guts of a corpse. The audience is wowed and grants you plus two charm. Much better. You're enjoying a generic off-screen activity when suddenly... Modeus, you are literally exactly the monster I was hoping to see. I think I finally figured out how to lure out the wildfire. After all, third time's the charm. Plus, I don't think I've ever seen anyone's schemes or problems or situations last more than three interactions. You think back on your interactions at Camp Spooky and Spooky High and agree that yes, conversations on a topic tend to happen either completely randomly or at most three times. We tried to prove I'm metal, but we are all already know I'm metal. We tried to prove I'm reckless and dangerous. We all know I am. The cat got the credit for it. The problem is that those are qualities on the inside. They aren't objectively measurable. I need to do something that is c categorically at its core all of those things. And ideally something that the old me that Aravi and Dahlia think is dead would have done all the time. You can't lure fire with fire, so that's out. Which means my second most tried and true activity is on the table. Crimes. Here we go, crime time, crime time, crime time, yeah. Yeah. I'm psyching myself up because it's fun, not because I've begun to doubt that I am, really am metal and reckless and cool, since the wildfire still won't appear to me. Yeah, that was convincing. What crime do you think I should do? Not because I don't know enough about- Oh, hi, kitty! <laughs> I accidentally kicked her because I moved my foot. I didn't know she was down there. Uh, anyway. Not because I don't know enough about crime, or I'm not a crime expert and the best crime ever, just because you've been a good hype person for me, so I want you to feel included. 
Yet again, another very convincing show of confidence from Damien. But if your spicy red crush needs a little extra push, you're happy to help him out. You suggest the perfect crime. A heist, it's time to steal someone's heart. Or the most popular crime among Gen Z. Kitty almost got kicked again. Piracy. My charm is higher than everything except for fun. Do we think piracy counts as fun? Kitty, what are you doing? Come here. Kitty, what would you pick if it were up to you? Would you pick piracy? Hmm? She's not even looking at me. She doesn't want to partake in this. But she's all for being held, so it works out for her. Piracy. I think it might be a heist. Um... But I can't tell. Hi, Kitty. Kitty says hi. She's actually trying to scratch her ear right now, but uh, I'm in the way. So, high five? Maybe? Yeah, she's got my hand now. Hi. She won't let go of my hand now. I think we're gonna go with someone's heart. Not so charming. Oh, god damn it. I messed up. I should have gone piracy. I'm sorry, Dutchie. I failed you. Ooh, good point. Why didn't I think of that? It's like Mr. Rogers says, the best crime is whatever is closest to you, and that requires the least amount of effort. Damien pulls out a knife and fucking stabs you. Weak. I know, I wish there was a back button. He delicately cuts out your heart and holds the still pulsating organ in his hand. Huh, it's weird. This, this somehow feels not as satisfying as it used to. Hmm. I can't quite explain it. It's like the sheer jolt of adrenaline from stabbing someone has devolved to passing amusement instantly hollow. Agony sears through your system as your pathetic body begins to fail without a heart. You're in excruciating pain. Uh, ugh, what if Aravi and Dahlia were right? What if I really have changed? You're not sure, but what has changed is your body's ability to pump blood and keep it alive. Was this even a crime? I mean, you're the one who told me to steal your heart. If I have your full and knowing consent, then you were either A, doing me a favor, or B, maybe it's your thing, I don't know. See, none of the above, it wasn't really a favor, since you were trying to get him to flirt with you, and because of the excruciating torment you're feeling, it's for sure not your thing. Maybe this whole quest was misguided. Maybe I shouldn't have let Dahlia and Aravi bait me like that. <laughs> maybe I have changed. And maybe that's okay, there's a time where I would have been delighted to see all this blood pouring out of you and your heart. But now I'm just really interested in the color contrast between your body and the blood, and I wonder if I should take up painting. You see a bright white light at the end of a tunnel guiding you onward. This crime didn't help me at all. Your idea sucks. That's the last thing you hear, before respawning at your last save point. You're alive, but who cares, you didn't help Damien, and now he thinks your ideas suck. You make a joke about wanting Damien to suck you, or vice versa, but you're too busy mourning your minus two fun and minus one smarts and how he's definitely not going to want to watch a meteor shower with you. One by one, Last day of summer is here. Who will be your summer love? <laughs> Myself, thanks. That face. Look at that big frown. Okay, let's, uh, we're going to get rejected, but... Kitty, what are you doing? She's so happy right now. One by one, they'll all join my You hammer. finally gather the courage and ask your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. Loser. You wanna be my summer fling? No way. What kind of BS is this? Did you really think I'd say yes? Yeah, yeah, I love danger and making poor life choices, Fuck I know. Off. But even I have some limits. Uh, oh no, suck. being rejected turns out to be very embarrassing. I like that face too. I knew it was coming. You put all those camouflage classes you took to the test. You cover yourself in leaves and smile. And a smile to camouflage yourself as a person who's okay. But you fool no one. Everyone sees you're broken inside from the rejection. You couldn't even do even this without screwing up. Congrats. Well, that's a slight problem. I knew I was gonna fail. That's so upsetting. What do you think, Kitty? She thinks she's gonna kick me a bunch. Hi. Okay. Well, we tried. 
we tried. Before we knew it, those weeks were gone. It felt like a hot minute, and it felt like an entire lifetime, especially the entire lifetime. That night, as we saw summer coming to an end, we all wondered what would come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older and I can see it, how those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned tragedies sung for centuries, a wild night become epics treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a constellation we'll always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. Okay. Well. We failed. We failed. Kitty's still here. She's just slumped. You can only see her ears. Hi. So. That. Was Monster Camp. Our return to it. Since it came out. You just unlocked the ectoplasm. And the casket wine. And the low cost energy drink. With batteries on it. The loyalty lemonade. Great stuff. So yeah. And a hydrate. Let me shake cat fur off my hand real quick before I go, uh, you know. Grabbing a drink that's going in my mouth. She sheds everywhere. Do you want this? She had to smell it. She's not interested anymore. So, oh yeah. She just, you know, she has to have two. So yeah, thank you everyone for hanging out, chatting, um, helping me make bad decisions and making fun of everything. Uh, thank you for all the hydrates, the text-to-speech. Thank you again, Dechi, for resubbing. And um, thank you all for all those things that you do. I'll see you all next time. See you. Oh, God. I'm going to live that down. Bye-bye. <laughs>